So, hi everyone. Um, yeah, I'm Daniel Hiller. I'm working at Red Hat uh, as a software engineer, and I'm going to talk about uh, flakes in general in the code base. So, my talk is based, is, ta uh, is uh, uh, named Squash the Flakes. Um, since um, I think I'm going to talk about a little bit of a taboo topic. Um, so, let me start with the agenda. So uh, the talk will be around 25 minutes, including uh, QA. Um, I will give a short introduction to flakes, like uh, what, are, what is a flake and what is the impact of a, of a flake and also for a lot of flakes. Um, so how do we, uh, do we, can we, can we minimize the impact of a flake? Um, I want to introduce you to the flake process that we have established inside the Qubit project. Um, what tools are we currently using? Um, and uh, so uh, at, at the end or in the outrun, I want to give you a little uh, overview of the future. So what gaps are we still facing? Um, what do we want to cover next? Um, and where also are opportunities for people in the community probably to help. Um, yeah, and the end of the section or, or the end of the, the last section will be uh, Q&A. So actually, I would really like to um, ask the audience what a flake is, but uh, due to the platform, I cannot really do this. But I'm just uh, urging you to think about for a moment what a flake might be. So I can tell you what is not a flake, at least not in this context. So this is a snowflake. If you're happy, uh, happy to be in an area where you have snowflakes, then we're not talking about those at the moment, or for this talk at least. Um, so a flake in the context of CI um, is an automated test that doesn't behave deterministically. Like um, it fails and passes in successive runs without any code change having happened to the code base. So I wanted to illustrate this um, from our Prowl uh, dashboard. Uh, what you can see here are three, three screenshots. So the first one in the upper area is um, the PR history. So when you're having a PR entering uh, the GitHub uh, repository, when the PR is opened, uh, automatically tests are being run by our Prow infrastructure. And the, in this screen, you can see how the history of the runs per lane um, has been doing. So what you can see, for example, on the left side, on the upper below the, uh, the, uh, the blue uh, bar at the top, you can see the lanes that have been run. And on the right side, you can see how each of those runs um, went. So if it was red, of course, it failed. And if it was green, then it succeeded. And the interesting thing of this screenshot is that you, at the top of the leftmost green run, you see a small um, code that actually is a GitHub, um, GitHub commit ID um, or a Git commit ID. Um, so what it says actually is that during those three runs, the GitHub or the, the Git commit ID didn't change, which means that there was no change in the code base during the runs, which means, of course, that there must be something wrong, uh, that there must have been something wrong in the first run and in the second without any code was changed. So that actually could tell us that there is a flake lurking somewhere. When we now look at the um, look at the job overview, which are the screenshots on the lower left on, on the lower right side. The left one is the job overview for the run that has actually failed. And there you see that a test has failed, which while it hasn't failed in the succeeding run on the lower left side, where you can see all tests have passed. 
And actually that could indicate that a flake is uh, being present in the code base. So um, what is the impact of flakes? Um, I want to cite a survey of flaky tests, which is, has been published in the ACM in 2021. Um, a survey over flaky tests uh, noted that 97% of all the flakes um, of, uh, within the, that the survey had covered were false alarms. This means that they didn't actually point out some uh, actual bug in the code base, but they failed for another reason. And the second thing is that more than 50% of flakes could not be reproduced in isolation. So they failed in the CI somehow, but they didn't fail when we when when you retried it um, to when they retried it to try to rerun the test somehow. And that, of course, has the following effect to developers. They tend to ignore the flake, and they think that this is safe behavior to do. Then further, uh, another side of this survey of flaky test says that the Microsoft study has demonstrated that only 0.02% of the flaky tests led to or would have led to 5%, more than 5% of all failed builds uh, in that period that they surveyed. So like two of 10,000 tests were flaky and they led uh, to actually to one of 20 builds failing. So you can see that the impact is pretty huge. So this is like sitting in a burning house and saying, this is fine. So in general, what we saw when we were actually looking at what the, what the flaky test produced in our CI and in our work, daily work somehow, of course, we saw the increase of CI load because um, flaky test runs, of course, lead, lead to um, test runs being repeated. Um, of course, this leads to longer feedback cycles so that we, the developer actually doesn't, uh, does get a later response whether his work actually is valid or not. Also, of course, it leads to slowdown of merges so that you would probably have to repeat a uh, flaky test run several times to get it merged. <clears throat> Another um, impact on that is that uh, effectively um, flakes lead to um, invalidating the effect of test prioritization and acceleration test leaks. Like, for example, running a subset of tests um, or parallelization and so on, because all those, of course, you can't really you, 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 can't, you can't really benefit from those, um, from those techniques. The worst thing that would happen would be that it actually reverses the acceleration impact of batch testing. Batch testing in that context is um, you have a set of PRs that are tested in one batch. And if any flake makes the test run fail, it needs to resort to bisect the PRs and in, a, in, in that worst case, then uh, resorting to testing every PR uh, on its own again, which of course um, results in a lot of wasted, wasted resources. Yeah, and finally, of course, you have devs that are losing trust in automated testing. So in one picture, you could say that flaky tests lead directly to developer frustration. So what can we do to mitigate this impact? Um, of course, we want to, in general, we want to reduce the impact in general um, as much and as fast as possible so that we can avoid all this frustration and dissatisfaction with the test, or with the code base. How do we do that? So in a nutshell, uh, we play the fire extinguisher. So we try to find, locate the flaky tests, exclude them as fast as possible and um, bring them back as soon as possible so that the test coverage will not get hurt somehow. So when we are looking at how can we actually do that, we have two requirements for that. 
So first of all, of course, we need a report um, that shows us what the possibly the flaky tests are. And the second one would be a method which we can use to actually remove a flaky test from the set of the stable tests. So therefore, we take an assumption um, that any PR that has been merged into the code base had all gating tests succeeding. Therefore, any test that has been merged and that has failed lanes could contain execution of flaky tests. So this is uh, two screenshots. The first of uh, the, le uh, the, the, uh, the upper left, of course, is the same role that we looked at before. And the lower right one is the flake finder report, which actually tells us which tests could be flaky. So what you see on the upper left is that this test run um, um, has failed in the pull request 9445 which can you see which you can see directly reflected also in the flag finder report which i have marked with a red um, arrow uh, so that you can see it a little bit better and also of course the run will um, be shown in uh, actually in the row column where you can see the the test lane on the right which you can click upon the uh, upon the numbers, and you can actually directly see that this test run is part of the test report of the flake finder report. So I would like to continue to describe you the general process. So um, how we uh, do um, mitigate the impact of flakes. So what we currently have is a meeting that is happening in regular intervals. Um, at the moment, we have per week one dedicated meeting um, that uh, where we meet and uh, look at the at the flag report um, and decide per possible flag um, whether actually it's a real flag or just a test failure. Just a test failure, of course, another is another issue. But if it's a flag, then we determine. Um, how to probably fix it. If it's an easy fix, then we would probably do like that. If it's not, then we would directly, uh, we would create a quarantine PR and remove the test from the code base and uh, then uh, hand the actual issue uh, to a dev that would tackle, tackle this um, and uh, either um, create a quarantine PR and a fixed PR to bring it back um, but in any case, we want to bring the test back into the code base as soon as possible. So also we have, of course, some um, emergency flake um, quarantines, which uh, for which we have uh, certain thresholds, um, like um, if it has uh, an impact of more than 5% uh, per the last two weeks, for example, we quarantine it, or if it has a uh, impact of beyond 20% uh, in the last three days, and we also quarantine it directly. So um, let me now uh, show you a little bit around and the tools we have at our disposable at our disposal. So first of all, we have an overview and uh, uh, like a Grafana graph where we have an overview of the flags that are currently. Um, uh, that are currently present. And this, um, of course, also tells us how we are progressing, whether we have an increased amount of flex or a decreasing amount of flex. So this gives us a general overview of, an, of which areas are uh, hurt the most, um, or whether we, we don't have any flex to look at, or whether we have flex to look at. Um, then uh, we have, of course, our main tool, which is the flag finder report which um, in general gives us an overview of all the flags that have been registered or um, that have been seen uh, in the merged PRs. Um, so all the flags are sorted by severity. So like the ratio of um, failing versus succeeding. So in the lower left, for example, you see four squares 
and you see the numbers like the red number and the green number. And the green number, of course, tells you whether the how often the test has succeeded over this um, over this time range, and the uh, red number tells you how often it has failed. And the uh, higher the ratio, the more the uh, background color of the square goes towards red. So it it uh, alternates from uh, it goes from green to red. The the higher the ratio is, in a sense. Also to uh, make it a little bit easier for reviewing flakes. Uh, we uh, are um, prominently um, displaying all the labels that are uh, hidden inside the test names um, so that we can uh, see more easily which um, SIG, for example, the test belongs to and whether it's a serial or a parallel test. Um, and other information like for example also you could normally you don't see this in this picture but also the quarantine label would would be uh, seen here but i will get to that later on so the next tool we have is ci search this is a spawn of openshift ci search which um, openshift of course is using um, to um, to give a browsable index of uh, of their um uh, prowl logs and this gives us the opportunity to enter for example a test id in the search field which you can see on the screenshot here and just directly get uh, get an uh, get an overview of which tests failed and the most important number on the ci search would be the impact which you see if you're looking at the middle on the right you see for example on this one it is two percent impact this tells us exactly how much the impact of, um, of that um, test ID, for example, is, how often it failed and how often it matched in, in the end. Um, so the next tool, this is the essential, the, 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 um, uh, the, the, um, the essential tool to extract the quarantine flakes from the code base or not extract, but just actually to, to skip those tests somehow uh, because we want to exclude them. So uh, in the lower um, screenshot, for example, you see the test description and there you see in the edgy bracket, uh, you see the quarantine label, which actually is brought in whenever a test is being quarantined. Um, this quarantine label is added, which then leads to this text test not being executed. With the caveat that it's not being executed in the pre-submits, it's still executed in the periodic jobs. So um, all those tests that are actually gating the mergers are not executing a test in quarantine, while the periodic jobs that we also run are still executing it so that we can see how that quarantine test is still doing. So um another tool that we also leverage is the test grid which is might be familiar from kubernetes itself um, where we uh, have integrated our own prowl runs into the the test grid um, where we are looking at um uh looking at the the run pre-submits and the run periodics and we can uh like drill down um, have an overview, what you, you can see in the middle of the screen, uh, where you can see how the, each of those lanes is uh, uh, progressing. Like for example, the 124 operator in this screenshot is passing, while the 124 SIG compute is flaky. And of course, in the lower uh, right um, screenshot, you can see, for example, that you can drill down uh, which test actually failed on which one. So another tool, and in, in my talk, the last tool that we have um, or that we leverage for looking at how we're progressing is uh, CI Health. So this CI Health records metrics about, uh, for example, about the merge queue length, the average merge queue length, um, the average time to merge, um, the retest to merge, and the merges per day so that we can see how in general we are progressing so what you can see in the screenshot so actually this is of course is a, is a repository 
um, readme page where you can see, for example, those uh, buttons that you can see in the top that uh, which are all green. Fortunately, at this at this time, at the time of the screenshot, they were all green, but they can change their color uh, whenever, uh, for example, something is going wrong. Like when you have high retest to merge um, and um, or or something else that is going beyond um, the, the good uh, barrier that we have. So um, it, we would be seeing this, like, uh, for example, when we have high retest emoji, we would get yellow on the right side, this, this button. Um, yeah, and that's, that's all for the tools that we have. Um, of course, we also have lots of graphs so that we can see how we have been progressing over time. I think this goes back to, I think, to the end of 2019 or something. So we have historical data for around three years. So yeah, when uh, that's what we have now, and now I'm going to talk about the future. Um, so what we are wanting to close regarding gaps is that we want to have something like um, an approved checking of PRs against flakes. Like we want, of course, we want to be notified whenever we are. Um, uh, there might be flags that might be entering the code base somehow. That would be ideal that we had that, but we still don't really have that. Um, so another thing that we would want to improve on would be um, that we would want to have to something like a quick dashboard of how exactly we are progressing, like beyond CI health. So how many flags did we have, for example, last week? Um, and how many flakes did we squash last week, for example, that would be something that would be really great to have. Also, what we're also missing at the moment is a, is a dashboard like, or that could also be integrated into that maybe. But yeah, that, this, uh, at current, we are really missing the, the, the exact number of flakes in an overview, uh, like um, that we could probably somehow drill down which flakes are present for what ZIG and uh, the most interesting thing would be how long are they already in quarantine so that we would have metrics around um, um, which uh, quarantine flakes we would need to tackle at first or uh, give priority to tackle. So this we also do with, uh, with other tools right now. Um, yeah, like lots of statistics would be helpful, I think, to improve our work in general. And yeah, the, the, the best thing that we would have uh, would be something like uh, when any PR contains a flaky test that another PR would probably um, uh, be created to quarantine that one. But that's just, um, I think, at the moment, wishful thinking. So yeah, let me close out this um, by telling you um, how you can help. Um, of course, you can join the Cupid Dev Slack channel, you can join the Cupid Dev Google group, or you can start fixing flex right away. That would be also great. Thank you. So, um, yeah, that's all for me. Thank you, everyone, for your attendance. And I hope to have not let open that much questions, but let's see. Thank you, Daniel. We just have one question at the moment, but it is kind of multiple questions, uh, potentially. How many flakes are caused by the load on the CI system? And is it kind of a spiral? Flakes lead to more runs and more load and more flakes due to load. Um, actually, I'd say um, that the load itself would not be causing flakes. Um, because in general, we have um, the scheduling of the jobs. Each job, test job has its own, uh, has its own guaranteed uh, quota of resources that it gets. And the other jobs are not scheduled when there is not enough uh, quota on the cluster. So I'd probably say that a flake in itself is still a flake. Um, of course, I would not probably um, not completely exclude this possibility, but I'd rule it out um, at the first. If uh, I'd probably say that please leave me, uh, please give me evidence that it is like that. At the moment, I haven't seen it. But um, yeah, 
give me the evidence and I'll see what I can do. We have two other questions. Uh, so I might get you to try and quickly answer the first one and then I'll leave you with presenter mode on so you can reply to the other one um, with your video and mic off. Uh, so uh, from Miguel, sometimes the entire cluster boot up fails for whatever reason. Do we keep track of that? Asking because that is not covered by your definition of flake, um, flake into test. What actions do we do to prevent this from happening? That's a good question, I'd say. Um, actually, like like Miguel, like you said, I think that that uh, I'm or we are covering actually flakes uh, in the test in the in the with the regard of actually a flake being a test being executed and failing and or um, uh, passing on successive runs. But to give you the short answer, we don't keep track of that, if I remember correctly. Um, there might be some room for approval that we should probably track that. But yeah, um, please feel free to join or um, maybe join our meeting somehow or just join the Cupid Dev and, and let's discuss that somehow offline. So um, yeah. And I see the other one from Alai Patel. Um, Uh, the short answer to this second question is no. We don't have the way to tell the flake finder to, to ignore PR at the moment. But I guess um, that this might be doable. So like we could introduce a label um, um, and, and uh, filter that when we are creating the flake finder report. But yeah, currently this is not, this is not, um, this is not possible. Thank you very much, Dave. Daniel. Thank you. Thanks for having me. See you all soon.